Thank you so much for inviting me here today, and uh, thank you for that powerful witness. That movie is amazing. I, I really now want to see the whole thing. Uh, the pictures of the mountaintops uh, being removed from mining uh, really dramatize something that's very hard to put into words or statistics about the impacts that business as usual is having on our environment. Most of us, especially those of us who live here in California, I think have gotten used to the fact that um, the air is cleaner, you can see the mountains more days, the cars that you see on the roads don't spew out as much pollution as they did once upon a time, and we can feel proud, all of us, about the progress that we have made. But our brothers and sisters in many places, in many communities, are not experiencing that same degree of satisfaction when they look around. And they're constantly told that the choice is between making more progress versus enjoying a good standard of living. And so it was really so uh, heartening and, and um, emotional to see uh, the Baptist minister, in Mississippi, in an area that was devastated by Katrina, pulling together his uh, neighbors and, and holding a town meeting and talking about taking on the, the powers that be because the powers that be there are the people that provide whatever jobs there are to the people in that community. We in California are in a different place right now with respect to the issue of global warming because a number of years ago, when the economy was in a much better place than it is right now, a very courageous legislator named Fran Pavley and some of her colleagues were able to overcome a lot of opposition and get a law on the books that the governor signed that committed California to essentially becoming one of the nations that signed the Kyoto Treaty. So we now have a law in our books, it's called AB 32, the Global Warming Solutions Act of 2006, that says that California is committed by law to reducing our emissions, our contribution to the gases that are uh, warming the planet, uh, back to the levels that they were in 1990 by the year 2020, which means a reduction of about 30% in our overall uh, contribution. That can be met, as we know, uh, with relatively sensible changes that we all know need to be made anyway. We're not talking about everybody having to plug in their vehicle. We're not talking about people having to only heat their homes with solar panels, although we do need to make progress in that direction. And certainly every new home that's built in California needs to be absolutely zero emitter of, uh, of uh, pollution, meaning essentially it's completely perfectly insulated and built with the kind of materials that allow us to not have to create more pollution to, to heat and cool uh, our own personal space. But the thing that's missing from this argument that we're now having in politics is a sense of possibility. A lot of people, maybe people that you know, maybe even some of you are frightened that if we continue to pursue these very aggressive, ambitious environmental policies that we have in California, that this is going to lead to worsening our economic problems. Uh, and you know that uh, unemployment in this state is as high as it's ever been. We know that there are people hurting out there in our communities. And so some of those who have opposed doing anything about the environment for decades are taking advantage of this situation. They are trying to qualify an initiative for the ballot. They're circulating the petitions now, um, and they hope to put it on the November ballot and they, what they hope to do is not repeal, because that sounds too harsh. They're going to suspend AB 32 uh, just for a while. Um, and the statistics that they are using for how long they'll suspend it are till unemployment rates get up to uh, less than 5.5% for uh, 
six consecutive quarters. What that amounts to is a, a boom that we haven't seen in California but a few times ever in our history. We'd like to have unemployment that low, but because we're such a high migration state, people move in and out, businesses are always starting and ending, um, we probably wouldn't see it. And what that would mean would be an end to policies that the state has now put into place that are designed to give incentives for people to use more solar energy, to use more uh, uh, efficient techniques for heating hot water, for example. Rebates, like the ones that are just coming into effect for appliances that are more efficient. All of those programs have been adopted in order to help us meet our AB32 goals, and they could all disappear by a vote of the people in November if we can't stop this thing. On the other side of the coin, there's a mounting evidence, this is not just hope, this is actually statistics, that the future of our state, the future of good jobs in this state is going to be in green businesses. This year, an agency that has nothing to do with the environment, our Economic Development Department, uh, did a survey of 15,500 companies and found that there are half a million workers in California right now that are employed in producing green products or services, including 93,000 in manufacturing, 68,000 in construction, that's the people who are you know, digging the tanks for uh, biofuels or who are installing the new solar panels and insulation, 42,000 in professional scientific and technical jobs, 38,000 in recycling and innovative waste management, but more important, in the new and emerging economy, the places where venture capitalists are putting their money, these are the green jobs. So while it may only be 5% of the workforce today that's making a living doing green work, everyone who is making bets on the economy and who's, who's placing their money in the economy is expecting that to double within the next few years because of government policies like AB 32. So as citizens, we can do a lot. As individuals, we can do a lot in our own personal lives to reduce the pressure we put on the planet. But as voters, we can do more by pushing the politicians who are supporting policies like this uh, initiative. And it is being led by a member of the California Assembly um, and others to tell the truth about what they're up to, um, to stop taking money to do this from oil companies, which is where all their funding is com coming from, and to maintain the commitment that we have as a state to do our part. One of the greatest effects of global warming uh, is the devastation that it produces in some of the poorest and most vulnerable areas of our planet. And one of the great uh, economic threats of global warming is the kinds of migration that we know are going to occur, that we've already seen occurring. Um, you know, Louisiana will never be the same as it was before Katrina because in addition to the people who died, hundreds of thousands of people simply left and vanished who were unable to live there anymore. We're gonna see these kinds of migration movements going on all over the planet as the effects of global warming become more clear. So uh, I think all we can do in our own space, in our own place, is to take a stand and do the right thing here and hope that our witness will influence others to do the same. It's worked up until now. It's worked on a bipartisan basis with the Democrats and Republicans supporting it up until now. And we need to insist that we keep it, keep it going into the future. So, Thank you all for being here today and for all that you're